to welcome to snickerdoodle stitch my name is kathleen and this is a channel about cross stitch so welcome this is my 2023 whip parade so i have about 50 project project uh bags and they are sort of in seasonal order i'm a seasonal stitcher and i keep all of my project bags on a shelf except for ones that are coming up next to be stitched and I pull them into, I have two different totes. Um, that's one. The other one is actually a plastic laundry basket from Ikea, I think. But so I keep them in kind of seasonal order and pull the next chunk. And then when I'm done with that, they go on the shelf kind of to the back of the row. So I'm going to start with Christmas. I am not done stitching Christmas yet. I will at least stitch Christmas through New Year's. And I do have in here a pattern that is Christmas that is actually going to be my New Year's Day start this year. So I'm going to start with Christmas, then go on to winter, which is snowmen, things like that. You know, wintry theme, but not, not holly jolly. Then go into spring, then summer, samplers, what I'll call everyday, which is non-seasonal miscellaneous stuff. And then finish up with fall and hopefully I didn't leave anything out. I will put chapters in on the video. So if there's a section you're interested in or not interested in, you can skip and see, you know, whatever section you'd like to look at. So I will do that before I post the video. Um, all right, I guess let's just dive in. So this one, I thought I would have more done on this. I just started it last night. And I had originally planned on filming tomorrow night, but friends invited me to their house for dinner tomorrow for a late holiday celebration or early for New Year's, I guess. And so I've got to get this filmed tonight. Today is Wednesday, December 27th, and I need to get this filmed so that I can edit it and I want to get it posted before the New Year's weekend. Since I know a lot of people like to stitch and watch whip parades over the New Year's weekend. That's my plans. I'm actually going away Friday and possibly staying overnight till Saturday. I'm excited because Friday I'm going down to the Stitching Post, which is a huge uh, crusted store in Baltimore, just south of Baltimore. And they have a year end sale every year. So I am go I have off Friday to go check that out. I've been working all week. So what I started, I actually bought a Stitching Post last year when I was down there. And it is Silver Creek Samplers Kringle Flying Academy. This is the pattern. And I did not get very far, but I thought I was starting stitching it and that I would be a little bit farther before I filmed my whip parade. But since I'm losing tonight as a stitching night and the filming, I did not get too much done last night. You know how starting a project, first I had to flip-flop my dyed, over-dyed linen to decide which direct, which you know, which direction, which piece I wanted to use, all of that, and then decide, am I going to start in the middle? Am I going to start on the side? And I decided on the middle. So excuse, excuse it being in the Q-snap. Normally on my floss tubes, I would have things ironed and um, hanging on these foam core boards, but no way I can do that with 50 projects. I would have total chaos and never know what went back in what bag. So this is Kringle Flying Academy, and all I've got done is the NG in flying. And this is on 28 count fiber on a whim night sky. And they actually did it on 18 count fiber on a whim Ada night sky. And when I was digging through my stash and trying to decide, did I want to do it on linen? I don't have a lot of Ada, but I have some. And I was like, oh, I think this blue would work. And then I realized it's the same. It's the same as what they use. It's just the linen instead of the uh, Ada. So not too much to look at there. Sorry, that's not more exciting. I am going to keep working on this this week. In fact, when I'm done filming here, if it's not too late, I'll probably stitch on it some more tonight so that I have a nice good start on that. I will keep stitching on Christmas. I'm thinking maybe even through January, although I've got some snowman stuff I want to work on as well. I'm going to come up with a better way to do this. Well, I'm committed now. This next one is Lily Violette, and it's called Waiting for Christmas. And that's the pattern. 
And I love Lily Violetti. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm kind of giving it a French pronunciation and I don't know that it's French. I think it might be Italian. Anywho, um, I love her patterns. They're very retro. Like I love this little um, lady with the red polka dotted coat. Um, looks like it could be from the 50s. Love that look. And I am doing it on 32 count fiber on a whim slate. And I got a pretty good start on this. Last, I, I just started it last weekend. I had a couple finishes. And speaking of finishes, my next video, which will be two weeks from now, so probably right before the um, MOK weekend, is going to be my 2023 finish parade. And I do all of my own framing and finishing for, you know, various finishings. So, I wanted to do a video partly for myself just to record everything that I finished through the year. But this is how far I got. Um, I need to get the yellow in the windows. It was a yellow that I didn't have and I don't know, I may just pull another yellow because I don't know that I feel like going to the store just to get one plus. Well, I guess I could pick it up Friday maybe. And then around this village and creating the roofs is just white for snow. Let me hold this up really close and maybe you can see if I can get it to. So my plan is to, to at least get, before I'm done my holiday stitching for the year, the yellow windows in and then the outline of the white. And I thought the white it's a lot of just fill in if I outline around and it would make some great retreat stitching because then I wouldn't have to count. It would be very mindless and filling in white I find incredibly boring. So one thing I noticed since I stitched this, this little village is centered right under the Merry Christmas and that would be cute even just like that without the little girl, little, you know, I got, I got more fabric here, it's folded up without the little girl standing over here. It's actually, the village is centered under the words. It wouldn't require any modifications or anything. To have just that would be really sweet. So then I started thinking, well, maybe I wanna stitch this this way and I'll do the little girl separately, but I don't know what I would do with them that size. So I'm gonna put the little girl on here as, or lady, as, um, as designed but really happy with that and I like working on fiber on a whim linen it, it's a nice linen all right this next one this is heart and hand Christmas tiny town this is the pattern let me turn it this way that's the pattern and I started this at Stitch New Jersey last July. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not loving it. So I haven't worked on it since then. All I got done was in, I started in the middle is this tree and the candy cane. And then there's a candy cane that goes on the other side of the tree. And I may just stitch that and make an ornament out of it and call it a day. And that's why I've sort of abandoned this project and I haven't worked on it anymore because I can't make up my mind what I want to do with it. Let me hold it back here so you can see the colors a little better. Um, I think it's the colors. They're, they're very, uh, it's kind of a 1980s term, but they're very country Christmas and I'm more of a traditional you know, bright red, th um, 321, absolute favorite red. And this doesn't have 321. It's sort of a brownish burgundy and, and kind of a, I don't know, dark pinky salmon-y. It's not really red. It looks red on camera. All right. We won't look at it that way. Anyway, I think it's the colors and I could convert the colors, but you know, I sort of just lost interest in the project after that. All right, this next one, what is this? This is nothing. It's a whole lot of Lugana and floss. 
Got a bunch of splendors in red and green. I do know what it is. It is kitted up to work on this JBW Scandinavian ornaments. I did the little sweater up there. I converted it and did it in a dark blue and light blue and put a snowflake in the middle instead of the reindeer. And that was what I used for my needle minders that I gave out at Sweater Weather this past fall. But I have that in here. And I have JBW Stitching in the Round, which is this one. Love this pattern. And I planned on doing it in a variegated red, which is in here. And I like stitching hers on the Ghana, like 25 count or 28 count. Um, one over one. So that's what is in that pack. This one. Oh, I'm excited about this. This is going to be my New Year's start. It's Mirabilia, the Christmas Elf Fairy. So I haven't started it yet. And I know that that's not a whiff. Sorry, you can't see her face for the glare. Um, and I haven't watched it yet, but I saw that Candy, the 614 Stitcher, her thumbnail for her latest video is holding that pattern up. So I've got to look and see. I can't remember if she started it or if she's planning to start it, but I am going to stitch this on 32 count Fox and Rabbit Eucalyptus, which is this color. And everybody I looked at online have it done like the pattern on kind of a cream but the flosses looked really yummy on the eucalyptus. So um, the pattern does call for crescent colors, but I have a DMC conversion that I did and I'm gonna do it with DMC. So next regular video, I should have a nice chunk of work done on that. It's not very big. I think when I looked, she only finishes at five by seven, the stitched area, five and a half by six and three quarters. So it's 86 by 124. It's not very big. So there should be a lot of that to see next, next regular video, because that's my New Year's Day plan. This next one, my regular viewers, sorry, you saw this not too long ago and nothing more has happened with this. Um, this is Mouse Trilogy. It's, it's a Mill Hill kit. <clears throat> and I love Mill Hill kits for travel. I don't even bother putting them. Oh, if I could stop flashing the pattern. I just keep them in the cellophane that they came in. Um, because it makes it really tiny. They're sort of my flying travel kit because everything's in there that you need. All I need is, is one of my little tiny pairs of scissors and I'm good to go. And I have the base and a nice chunk of the cheese done. And I'm doing this on the perforated paper. And that's the other nice thing for travel. I don't have to haul along a hoop. I'm a hoop stitcher or frame or something. I'm, I don't stitch in hand. Um, so that's my mouse trilogy. It's called mouse trilogy. And this one is called Mac cheese. There's three of them. Two of them I have finished. They're hanging on my tree. Um, all right. These next couple are kitted up, but not started. I have the Mirabilia Santa's Magic, which is an out of print pattern. Gary from Garon Stitchery was working on this last year. I'm behind on Floss Tube and I'm wondering if he is finished. But they did it on Desert, Stan Desert Sand by Weichelt. And I am doing it on. Do I have it in here? Maybe. No, maybe not. Mystery fabric, but it looked almost exactly like the pattern. 
and I kitted this up last year. I had these grand plans. Gary was stitching on it. I was going to stitch on it too. And kitting was as far as I got. I got distracted by a couple other pieces which are now fully finished. Um, okay. Let me see. All right. Isn't this bag sweet? I bought it at one of the retreats this year. Kind of Norman Rockwell Santa's. I loved it. It is by PT Bags and it's very nice. Nicely made, nicely finished. And this is kitted but not started and it is Shannon Christine Designs Car Snow Globe. And I plan to stitch it on An even weave that I got years ago at AC Moore, before AC Moore went out of business and was bought by Michaels. And I stitched something else on a piece of this even weave and discovered that it is not exactly even. It's even, but it's fewer stitches one direction, either horizontally or vertically. So, I did flea market flowers on it and my flowers, instead of being round, are a little bit oblong. Most people wouldn't notice, but I did. So I've been careful about what I would stitch on this, but it's kind of hard to tell. It is a little bit mottled, sort of cloud looking. And these are the, these are three of the main flosses that go. Oh, here's a floss that, oh, and a needle. All right, I gotta figure out what that came from. Um, so my plan is to stitch it on that. I thought I would, I thought, I thought I was gonna get that started and finished this year and that so didn't happen. I, um, I need to allocate more than just December to Christmas stitching because Christmas or December just isn't enough. This next one also doesn't have any, yeah, all this mesh of floss. Those are all the colors that are used in this book, The Magic of Christmas by Veronique Engiger. Um, I should have brushed up on my French before trying to say that. This book is yummy. I love, it's, it's very retro. Um, let me see if I can find a page that isn't, I've got a lot of patterns copied in here to make them bigger and because the book is a little awkward to work with, but this is the style those are little elves. I want to do this little Santa outfit that's in the very middle on the hanger there. And then let me see, those are nice. Here's just another page to give you a sample of what's in here. I absolutely love this book. I had this book sitting next to my seat in my family room for a long time. And I would just pick the book up and look at the book because the book just, like every page had something on it that I loved. But I've done two ornaments out of here. And I've got the floss just all in this box because the book is really bulky and heavy. Um, and I periodically just grab some fabric and I've got the floss ready to go. This next one is a kit from Dimensions. And I have it in this snowman pouch that I made. This is the kit. It is called Jolly Trio Stocking. And it is a design by Stacy Yakula. 
I have used her images and rubber stamping for years and then she actually has some fabric out but it's got this really sweet little mouse up there that I love and I will say dimensions kits have changed over the years the fabric is really stiff and I debated stopping and doing it on something different but I already had quite a bit done so I basically have the whole snowman's hat finished um, so that's where I'm at on that it's a pretty big it's a pretty big chunk I haven't decided on him since the fabric's white, there's a lot of white stitching. Um, where did my pattern just go? For the picture. Good grief. Like all of the snowman inside is actually stitched. And I may do it with, I'm going to do the outline, this half stitching, half the shading in blue, which is just half stitches around the snowman and then decide, and I'll, and I'll have the nose and stuff done and then decide if I'm actually going to do all that white fill in. I hate stitching in white and that's a lot of just white. So I'm not sure for Christmas. I may just stitch all the colors and let the white fabric shine through. We'll see. Most of my project pouches I make myself. I like the I like the um, clear plastic kind. These are a little bit of a disaster now because. Um, All right, because I've got them all open and everything to do this. This next one is Val's Little Stuff, Ho Ho Ho. And it's either a whip or a finish. It's not fully finished though. I am doing this on 28 count white opalescent and I got the whole cat and stocking done. Ooh, and you can see the sparkly. I like the opalescent. And I know some people don't like to stitch on it. I didn't find it bad. But the little cat and stocking is completely finished. And this is another one. And I've got one more that I'm going to show that I am not sure I'm going to do the ho ho ho. Partly because this is getting a little big for an ornament for me. I prefer smaller ornaments. And if I leave this this way, I can finish it as an as a flat oval. And it'll be a scotch smaller than if I put the ho 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 on and finish it in the round. So he's either a whip or he's finished. Haven't decided yet. And the same with this next one. This is Jeanette Douglas Designs Winter Posy. And I got this on a freebie table at one of the retreats. Somebody was very generous and they even included all of their leftover floss, which this is tiny enough that it's enough silk left to, to fully fully do my thing but I'm doing it on 40 count linen and I got the little center which is the holly and the noel well sort of the center and I've got a little bit more on that holly to do um but I'm not having fun with it I just I'm not enjoying stitching on 40 count so this was a good project to practice that on. I love stitching one over one on like 25, 28 count, which is tinier than 40 count, right? That That's 20 per inch and one over one on 25 or 28 is 25 or 28 per inch. But I just am not enjoying stitching on 40 count, one over two. Um, this is Fox and Rabbit Flannel Flower which is a really nice, the light's blowing it out. It's modeled, but the modeling is a little bit of gray tone. Um, 
I love the fabric, but I hate the 40 count. So what I'm debating is just finishing out these holly leaves and just finishing this as an ornament. I really want to do the full pin cushion though. So I may finish this as an ornament and then do the whole thing on a one over one. Um, I need to tea dye some linen or something because, or Lugana, a lot of my 25, 28 count is pretty stark white or bright colors. And I do want something a little antique for it. So, but that's my, that's my dilemma with this one. I guess it is a whip because the leaves aren't finished, even if that's all I do is that part. And yes, it's still just sitting in the hoop. This next one, I am getting ready to start. Actually, these next, these next few are ones that I plan to start. And you guys are here for a whip parade. So, well, you know what? I'll go ahead and show it and I can put a bookmark in so you can skip through if you don't want to see this. I started Autumn Quakers and this past fall and really loved stitching on it. And so I'm going to stitch Winter Quakers. I had been eyeing up Winter Quakers at my local LNS, which is Strawberry Sampler in Pennsylvania. I'm lucky because within an hour, I have like six cross stitch shops. So I realize that we are very fortunate in this area. Um, but I had eyed it up there for a very long time. And then when I was at Galleria last year, I took the plunge and bought the Baldani's. And um, I have the called for dwarf. I got that from, I think, Euron Stitchery. So it's all ready. And that will be a nice winter stitch. I won't finish it this winter, but I'll get started on it. Um, this next one, is, sorry, my bag's getting a little discombobulated. I'm gonna do it on, oh, 32 count, wait, Belfast. There's not much to see on this one. I plan on doing the Mirabilia Giggles in the Snow I love this pattern. I've always loved this pattern. And one of my other LNSs had a sale last year and they had a bunch of patterns, like used, like they called them used, it, it's new. But somebody, pre-owned, I should call it, uh, patterns for sale. And this was one of them. And I was really excited to, to pick that up. I didn't start it partly because I haven't decided if I want to do it as two separate things or put them kind of side by side on one piece of fabric. I'm leaning toward side by side. So that will probably get started this year. And then I don't even have fabric pulled for these, but Rebel Stitcher Snow Bunny Kisses is on my list for this year. And Teresa Kogut Style and Snowman. I have all of the floss for it. And um it's small. It it's on 30 count two over two, it's only four and a quarter by four and three quarters. So it's only 71 by 68. And it's a cute snowman, but isn't five million white stitches. Ugh. And then the last one, which is kitted, which isn't started, is this Shannon Christine Falling Snow. I love stitching Quakers. And that's basically what this is. A lot of Quakery, snowflakey kind of dangly things. But love that. And I have some white chult, um What is this? 14 count Ada, which is pretty close to what's on the pattern. And I like stitching Quakers on um, 
Ada. I like the geometry of the Quaker against the blocky Ada. Okay, I'll wrestle with this later. Mm. No, I better wrestle with it now if I start just tossing things in going, oh, I'll fix that later. I will have a, I'm going to have enough of a mess to straighten up here. All right, that ends winter. And that, and that's probably the section that has the most kitted up things that aren't started because I've just been kitting some things up to get ready for my winter, my post Christmas winter stitching. So this next one, I am very excited to be nearly finished. I have less than a hundred stitches left, but I can't finish yet. It is a temperature chart, and this is from Zara Design Studio. It's Motifs Temperature Records is the name of it. She's an Etsy shop and everything's PDF downloads. So it's just, well, I'll hold mine up. Mine's almost done. Um, I am doing it on, I think, 16 count Ada. I picked an Ada count that it will finish at 10 by 10 because I can get a standard frame at Michael's, but... It is almost done. I've got five blocks left and it will be finished and I already stitched the year last time I was working on this and I will never do another temperature chart again. So it's a lot of fun um, in the beginning and then it starts to feel like a chore. And this is our hobby, right? It should be fun, it shouldn't be a chore. But I knew if I didn't keep up with it, it just would never get finished, right? I'm not one of those people that next year would backtrack and work on a 2023 temperature thing. It just would never happen. The pattern itself isn't that exciting. It's very repetitive. Um, I mean, the pattern's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. The stitching is not very exciting. It's very repetitive. So there's about 10 motifs in here, and they repeat randomly. Um... Each square is five by five, so it's 15 to 20 stitches per day. So I did force myself to keep up with it, but I am so glad that it's almost finished. And I won't, I don't think I'll do another one. It's just not for me. But I'll be very happy to have it done. And when I do my finish parade, I will have this one to show. So my plan is New Year's Eve to put that last box in. I've got the frame already. I've got my foam core cut. I'm ready to stretch it. So New Year's Eve, as I'm watching the ball drop, I may be stretching that and framing it and done. This next one is all bundled up and it's from With a Needle and Thread and it's this cute little snowman with the cardinal on his head and I've got a note on here to myself that a 9 by 12 frame should work that's stitching it on 32 count and this is on needle and flex Steinbeck and I have the snowman I got all of that white finished Let me hold it up. So it doesn't look like too much now, but it's all of that snowman and his scarf is done. All right, I need like a third hand. I'm used to having everything clipped to my boards and it's easier to it's easier to juggle. I stitched this with a week's um, over dye grits, maybe, um, floss. Oh, and there's another one kitted up in here. This is with the needle and thread spring fling. And it's a bunny, very similar to the snowman, only it's a bunny this time and it has flowers instead of like holly and berries. And I've got pink fabric all picked out but as I started stitching that snowman 
Boy. Oh, that weight took forever. This is really boring, you know. It's just row after row of weight. Good retreat stitching, though. I started that one at Galleria last year. This next one is another with thy needle. This one is wordplay, and it's April. So this is the pattern. I'm into, I'm into spring and Easter now. Can you tell? That bunny was in with the snowman, but the next project bag here is this one. So I am doing this one on 16. Oh, there's some other Easter patterns in there. I didn't realize that. I am doing this actually on 16 count. I don't know what this is. It doesn't come in very many colors. I think it's legacy linen. My friend Lana would know. And I'm not doing it in the cold pores. I just pulled some stuff. Anyway, I'm doing it on 16 count, two over two. No, four over two. So four strands of floss over two. So on 16 count, that works out to about eight stitches per inch. And this will make this, li what looks like a little tiny pin cushion it will make it large, like pillow sized. So there's, they had finished at mm, Well, they cut their fabric at five and a half by four and 11 sixteenths. So about five by six. And you can see mine's going to be huge, but it's going to make an Easter springy pillow. And in my finished parade that I'll film in a couple weeks, I have some other pillows that I did on the large count. I can't take credit for that idea. It was uh, the owner of Salty Yarns, which is a needleworks shop in Berlin, Maryland. They used to be in Ocean City, but they moved inland a little bit. This next one is Lavender and Lace. Isabella's garden. This is what she will look like. And the fabric that she's on is no longer available. And it's also a little brown for me. Um, I am doing it on 32 count abyss from fabrics by Stephanie. And I have quite a bit done on her. So I actually anticipate finishing her this year. Oh, I should get the picture out. So here's the picture, and here's how much I have finished. Let me hold it back first, then I'll hold it up close. Oh, let me do this this way. There we go. Um, so you can see I've got most of the dress. I've got the flowers on the one side. So I've got a lot of bubbles and her body, like her arm and her face and hair, and some flowers on this other side. And she will be done. So she's probably about 80% finished here. And I fully plan to finish her this year. She, she was going really fast. Let me hold it up closer. People have asked for that. Whoops. As I drop everything. So that is Lavender and Lace Isabella's Garden. And her colors were so springy. I know I had some dilemma with the fabric and I was worried it was too dark, but looking at it now, I don't even notice that. Um, oh, I don't know why this one's not started. This is Cricut Collection Addie's Angel. This is the pattern. They have it on a cream. And you'll see she's very bright. And I have a couple creams pulled as options. I've got Rogue Lugana, and the color is Freeze. I have a mystery fabric. Oh, Navy Bean. Because that's Legacy Linen, Navy Bean. So I had a couple creams as options. 
or I have this really dark green, which is um, dark teal green, and it's not over dyed or anything, so I'm going to guess it's Zweigart. I know where it's from, and then it could be white chalk or Zweigart, either one, but it's just a dark green. And the bright colors really pop on it, so I couldn't decide what fabric, and so that one didn't get started. <clears throat> But it's in this cute, um, I like this pouch with the campers. And I've got a zipper pull that's a little camper charm that came from Michael's. Michael's has these little campers. I forgot I was going to show my bags too. The Isabella's garden, the little girl blowing the bubbles. These guys aren't really blowing bubbles. It's candy, but it looks like they're blowing bubbles. And so I've got her in this bag. I like these retro fabrics. They don't really work in my quilting, but my Easter one was on this, these little kind of 1950s looking greeting card caricatures. Um, this next one, those are beach umbrellas. And inside the pouch is some, I don't know if you can see, it's beach chairs. This is the Country Cottage Garden, no, Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, beach boardwalk series and I got the first one done it's the ice cream shop there are seven houses or seven little shops and I don't know that I love stitching houses and shops so I might only do five. <laughs> that one is on Tabby Cat. Uh, what's the name of it? Cat's Whiskers. But I also have, that was the ice cream shop. There's the bike shop. Sorry, I gotta cover my face for this thing to focus right. The bike shop. This is the boardwalk banner, so it goes in the middle. And I have the surf shop. And that's all I have. There, there are some others out. Oh no, here's another one. Oh, that's the ice cream shop that's done. Um, I haven't been getting them like on auto ship or buying them every month, obviously, because they're all out now and I don't have them all. So when I have uh, orders for Fat Quarter Shop or something like that, I'll just tack them on then. So yeah, this is on 36 count. I'm doing it with the classic Colorworks floss, which is really yummy and fun. Very tangled mess very springy, summery, and this tabby cat whiskers, I'm doing it one over, one over two. So I wish I had gone with a fabric that's a little bit darker, but my trick for that is, well, I outlined a little bit of the weight, but when I frame this, if I put something, not this, this isn't, this isn't exactly right but if I put something underneath the fabric when I frame it instead of having it on white batting it actually will darken up the fabric a little bit so that's another trick for everybody the weight like if you see the sky it really just doesn't pop too much I mean, you can see the texture but from afar you can't really see the weight on there but if I put, so you can see the edge here where I've got this fabric held behind there. And so it will darken up the fabric just the teeniest bit. But again, this, this one's not really quite right. I gotta look for a, a solid in the right shade. But I'll deal with that when I finish and I'm ready to frame. This next one is Erica Michaels, The Beach is Calling. I got this one at 
Stitching in the Wild was last year. I fell in love with it there. They had the models all stitched up. And this is on Fabrics by Stephanie Chocolate. And Stephanie was at Stitching in the Wild. So she was there with chocolate. And it's the called for. I don't often use the called for. But this fabric was perfect. It looks like sand. And I got a good bit stitched on it. I was excited too because it's sort of a um like the trolley says Cape May and there's kind of a Victorian looking house on there. Um it's very Cape May ish and that's two hours from my house. It's a New Jersey beach. I grew up in southern Delaware, so I grew up going to the Delaware beaches, so I'm a Delaware beach goer, not a Jersey Shore goer. Um but Cape May is beautiful. Little Victorian beach town. And this one is also in a beach themed project bag. I like this fabric. I got it in New Jersey too. So got lots of Jersey things going there. All right, this next one. Ooh, I love this pattern. This is Madame Chantilly, Note de Stel. And it's this little girl catching stars in her butterfly net with the little poppies around it. And you can't tell now because I've got a Christmas quilt hanging, but the quilt that hangs back there normally has a lot of bright colors. It has some red in it. Um, I do have some red in my house in a few rooms and I like bright colors. So this is on 28 Count Lugana from Fabrics by Stephanie and it's called Nantucket Sky and it is the perfect sky fabric. Like great summer day sky. And I've got a good deal done on this so I anticipate this being a finish this year as well. I did stitch the um, saying in French it's charted in French and English and in Italian, and it's an Oscar Wilde quote, and um, I'm trying to think what the translation is. It's something like it's important to have dreams big enough that you don't lose sight of them. <clears throat> but I love this Nantucket sky. And let me get it up a little bit closer. So this is two over two on 28 count. I started this at one of the retreats. I mm, Stitching in the wild, maybe. I'm starting to lose track. I went to a lot of retreats last year. Um, but I basically have, well, not basically. I have all of the bottom and all, all of the flowers up this side. So I've got to do the little girl and the flowers over, over here and then these random stars and moon and she will be done. Oh, and I've got one flower down here in the corner left to do. So I don't know, two thirds, three quarters finished. But this one was a lot of fun and I love this fabric. In fact, I liked it so much that I bought more um, just to have on hand because it is such a nice sky. Now it is the um, Lugana, it's not the linen. I'll stitch on either um, or on either. It just depends on my whim and what color I have and count I want. and. But the Lugana, the modeling looks more skylight than the linen in that. So <clears throat> I like the Lugana. All right, this next one, these next few actually, I would call my smaller travel projects. I go visit my dad most Sundays or lots of Sundays, especially when it's NASCAR race season. Um, so I like to have smaller projects that I can that I can haul along, you know, I'm not hauling a 30 inch scroll frame or anything crazy. This is Sweet Wing Studio, always time for tea. 
And this was one of the line that they had put out to go with the Trinway Silk had a special, they put out like a special color packet each year. I didn't buy the Trinway Silks. I got this at Stitching in the Wild. And then when I went, I decided I did want them when I went back, they were sold out. But I got the pattern. And I just grabbed floss from Stash and that's what I've been doing this on. And I don't have a lot done. I've got the teapot finished. I am doing it on black Lugana. Um, so I have the teapot finished and I've started over here on the, um, the leaves that will go around. But that, the leaf's showing through. Let's grab something. But that's my start on that. And like I said, I just, I just grabbed from Stash. So my colors aren't even, they're not even that close. I didn't do like a conversion or anything. I just pulled, I just pulled some flosses. In fact, I think some of them, well, yeah, I've got, I've got kind of a mess going here. And it is in this really, this is what the smaller size bags from Garon Toten Bags are like. And then they've got really nice Velcro stitched on. Um, this one, I did the Smalls Exchange at Stitching in the Wild last year. And she had the small in this as the packaging. Poor thing, she had her small ready to go. And when she got down there, she realized that it was... Um, still sitting on her dresser. She stitched something in one day and uh, got that little bag to put it in. All right, this next one, or two, there might be two in here. Oh, sorry, my flesh is a little tangled up. Oh, there's my brother when he was little. Um, this is hands on design chalk squared. It was a whole series. You could stitch, um, like this up here on a big piece. I'm just doing a couple of the little rounds. These two I'm doing it's August and May. And I have, and this is the floss. The floss is just looking it's looking brighter on the screen than it actually is and I'm doing this on Ada 14 count Ada because that makes it easy for traveling and I think this is called chalkboard or chalk chalkboard I think and I've got this one down here is finished so that one's done and the one up here is nearly done Sorry, I thought doubling the Ada would keep the light from showing through. There we go. The one up here is ne nearly done. It's got some white kind of back stitchy things that have to go in. And then it's almost finished. And sorry, there's needles hanging. It's still in a hoop. It's fine that it's still in a hoop. It's going to get finished really close to the stitching. Um... in some kind of round pin cushiony flat fold thing or I have some coasters that I debated putting them in I'm not sure that the coasters are waterproof enough though to risk putting my stitching in there not that these were really time intensive stitches but so that that's just a little grab and go kind of project for me all right, this next one, this is another travel, but, and look, I've got it in travel themed. I got, this is another PT bags. I got, I know where I got these. I got these at um, Stitch, New Jersey at the retreat. Um, I normally like the clear vinyl and I use soft and stable for mine. So they, they stand up, they're very, um, you know, they're very sturdy. They're not floppy. I mean, this is full of stuff, so 
but it's not it's not floppy even empty um but those also don't like smoosh up <clears throat> this kind i love for traveling so this i started this on a cruise this last fall my nightmare cruise which didn't go where it was supposed to i got covid i'm still dealing three months later with some after effects of covid so i'm a little scarred by it but i'm going on another cruise in august this year to alaska with some other stitchers and um i'm gonna take this with me again and hope that it will create some <laughs> happier memories associated with this stitching but this is Carolyn Manning Designs Starstruck and I am stitching it on 18 count I think 18 count and I have one corner finished and the reason I love this for travel one it's repetitive so there's not a lot of thought involved in the counting and Ada, even my old eyes, can see the stitch on this with, um, um, you know, not great light, don't need any extra magnification, uh, just e easy to pick up and stitch on. So I just did this on, on the cruise. And it will be my cruise and probably flying project when I go to Alaska in August. All right, now we are into samplers. All right, this one is not in a pretty pouch. It's in a cardboard box. Um, this is Reflé de Soie, a French summer. It was a mystery box that came out a couple years ago. I didn't buy it when it was a mystery box. I got it after, after the fact. Um, I am doing it on 36 count Ro Roxy Flosco Dirty Porcelain, which is just gorgeous fabric. I went to, let me just first show the fabric and the flosses. These are the, these are the colors. There's not a lot of colors in this sampler, but I went to Stitch North last year. I'm still debating whether I'm going this year or not. I am signed up to go, but um, honestly, my car, it's about an eight hour drive and my car has 106,000 miles on it. And I don't know that I want to drive in Canada in a car with that kind of mileage on it. So I'm still sort of on the fence, but I started this during Sampler, se sampler September. It's always a tongue twister for me. And there's not a picture. It, it was sort of a mystery, but what basically happens, I mean, you can kind of see, it really is just this border that goes all the way around. And then there are these really big, big um, alphabets. So it's obviously it's silk and it's on 36 count. And the silk is a dream to work on. The Roxy Flosco fabric is a dream to work on. But this dirty porcelain is just, it's just the nicest, it's a really subtle modeling. It's just a nice creamy, modeled creamy fabric. It's very nice. Can't say enough good things about it. But this sucker is going to be big because I cut my fabric down before I start. And this is the fabric. So, yeah, this is going to be a big finish. I love the colors, though. Just, I didn't get as far as I thought I would on that. All right. This next one. Oh, I love this project. This one is... Um, Chardin Privé, ABC de la Bordeaux, and this is it. It's a band sampler, and I am not doing it in all of the called fours. I am, except that I replaced two of the pinks with reds, and I love this fabric. This is the project bag that this one's in. 
and then the little red spools in there. Whoops, I'm showing charts. I gotta stop. Um, I'm down to G. So I'm pretty far along on this one. I should have, um, let me see if I can figure out how to undo this scroll frame. It's about time to advance it anyway. But if I can take this out, sorry, gang, I should have, uh, I should have thought of this before. And I didn't. But let me quick, oh, good grief. I guess I got to undo all four. All right. But this one is pretty big um, because I remember when I looked for banding, it actually was going to take a little more than a yard. Um, so there's A to G. So it's all it's called for. That, that taupey colored lace piece in the middle was a beast to stitch. It's a bunch of cross stitch and back stitches in there to give that effect. So it gives a beautiful effect, but it was a pain in the neck. <laughs> Just a beast to count and stitch, but um, I don't want you to look on camera like there's a fabric flaw, but it's just the way the light's catching it. Um, yeah, so really happy with this one. It's a lot of fun to stitch. This banding is, oh, 28 count, it looks like. Um, I'm really bad about leaving my needles. To, here's a needle just stuck in my fabric. Uh, that's all right. It, it won't be in there. Wait, that's not quite right. It won't be in there that long because this one, it goes fast. Um, and I'll get back to stitching on it once. Once my winter and spring stitching is done, actually, and this one, this was a retreat project. Here's the bag it's in. Um, this is God Save the Queen or Annie Bayless, and it's a uh, Hands Across the Sea pattern. And mine was a PDF download. And in that section at the bottom, that's all kind of solid red. I laughed at this one. Well, not laughed. It's cute. So the little, the girl that stitched it, it's obvious that like she just did some stitches to fill in places. Let me hold it up close. Like here after Z, there's this funny little just section filled in. Or down at the bottom here and you could tell she just was gonna stitch everywhere there was blank space and so it's just some funny stuff but this section at the bottom I actually did a conversion and put in Queen Elizabeth and the and her her um years I started this at Stitch North, maybe, or did I finish, did I think I was going to finish it there? I don't remember. I had hoped to do this last year so that it would be like the coronation year. I think I started it when she passed in 2022 and then I thought I would finish it at Stitch North this year. That's what it was. And Stitch North was coronation weekend. But I didn't, um, I didn't get finished. I don't have a lot to do left though. I've got some of this border at the bottom and I 
Oh, there's some board. There's some rows that go in between these alphabets. So there's some very repetitive stitching, and I thought it would be good retreat stitching. I have stitched on this at, at a retreat. It's 32 count white linen, and I'm stitching it with um, Gloriana silks in poinsettia is the color. So it's a variegated red. The variegation isn't really showing up here, but it goes from a bright red to kind of a deep dark red. Um, and, and you can see on some of these, I am bad about just leaving things in frames. I won't if, like this one, the way it's going to get framed when it's finished, anything that's creased from the Q-snap will be in the frame, not not showing. So that's why I haven't worried about that one. This next one is Blackbird Design, Strawberry Fields Forever. And they've got that whole um, Beatles, you know, black strawberry fields. Um, Yellow Submarine, Long and Winding Road. I have Long and Winding Road. Um, and I have Vicki Clayton Silks, I think, to do that one in. But I haven't started it. It's not here. Um, oh, no, this is the one I'm doing with the Vicki Clayton Silks. And Vicki Clayton Silks come on little spools. And I have them in one of these bobbin keepers, which I pick up at the quilt shop. And... This is where I'm at with it. I've got the border finished. Well, not finished. And a nice start on the border. And this is being stitched on a mystery. Let me find a card. 32 count lakeside linen navy bean. And Garon Stitchery carries the Vicki Clayton silk conversions, and that's where I picked up the silks. And they are a dream to stitch with, too. I do love stitching in silk. But this, I, I worked on, I, mean, I started several samplers last year for Sampler, Sept Sampler September. <sighs> I always get tongue twisted with that. I don't know why. All right, this is another Redwork sampler. This one I bought last year at Stitching Post. Um, this is Broderie à Paris, and it's from Sue Hillis Designs. And it was in their clearance bin, and I loved it. And I almost have it finished. I only worked on this at retreats this year. But there it is. It's about 80% done. It's just on linen. Um, it is in silk and it's a bell soie. And it's just a dream to stitch. So I've got a lot of it. I've got this boxy border or frame left to finish around Brodery and then of course some stuff up in this this corner um but yeah it's um one retreat and I will be done see all I really have to do left is this box and this box and then finishing the border the frame around there and it'll be finished. It's fun. I like I like single color. Oh, that color is called Tulip. It is a bell swap, but it's called Tulip. It's the name. I like doing single color stitching. Um, especially for things like that. It's just very relaxing. <clears throat> All right, this next one. Hmm. Yeah, this was another one of my 40 count bright ideas. And I've got the bell swaths for this with some beautiful um, 
floss drops from Stitching in My Pajamas, who was somebody that gave them out at a retreat. And this is Sarah Spark, 1806. It's a limited edition pattern from Hobby House Press. So it's from Hobby Lobby. I got it. I stopped at Hobby Lobby last year. Hobby Lobby. How about Hobby House? Not Hobby Lobby. Hobby House in Pittsburgh, New York, on my way up to Stitch North in Toronto. And so since this was an exclusive for them, I thought, oh, perfect. And then actually the colors go very well with my living room. Um, but I had the bright idea to do it on 40 count. And yet again, I don't really like stitching on 40 count. Um, but I've got a lot done on this one. So, well, not a lot. Uh, more than I'm willing to just discard. So I got the alphabet finished at the top. And this is all 1 over 2 on 40 count. Oh, I remember. Yeah, there's there's some there's a few specialty stitches on this too. These borders are actually I don't think X's, which is why they were looking funny on camera. But let me get really close. Oh, okay. Let me not do that. I'll blind everybody with the whatever was happening there with the color. So it will finish at this size on 40 count. Um, it's going to be slow going on 40 count because I don't really like stitching on it, but this one I probably will go ahead and finish. All right, I've got one more sampler. Well, this one isn't maybe a sampler. It's samplerish. This was an exclusive at Garon Stitchery, Stitching in the Wild. Although last year, Gary thought that she might release it at market this year. So I started stitching on this, and then when I found out that nobody was really going to be able to get it, um, I stopped stitching on it. So I'll keep an eye out if it's available at market. I'll go back to, well, I'll probably get back to stitching anyway because I liked it. I didn't buy it just to show people. I bought it because I liked it. But it's Teresa Kovit, and it's called Sunshine and Blooms. And it says, my heart sings with sunshine and blooms. And this is on x -Jude Designs fabric and it's grandma's slip. And I really don't have much done. I have kind of the hill shape and the start of the basket. And I just remembered now that, it, now that I hold this, the other reason I didn't work on this very much. Um, I don't know what grandma's slip is colored with. Oh, and this, uh, this needle minder is from the ladies from Two Needles Pulling Thread. Great plus tube, and I've met them at a couple retreats this year. Super nice, Bo both of them, just, just lovely. Um, but anyway, this extra design, grandma's slip, it's a beautiful fabric, and it's got these, like, funky yellow sprays on there. Um, it smells, like, not pleasant. And I don't know what it's dyed with that gives it that smell. And I should just leave it out. That was my thought. Like, um, like every time I was stitching on it, I kept thinking, what is that smell? And I'm looking around and I finally realized it's the fabric. And I should just like, I should just put it on the drying rack in the basement and just leave it hang there until I'm ready to stitch on it later this spring and see if that smell will work out. You know, you get coffee dyed fabric and it smells yummy like coffee. Yeah, this, this one's not so yummy smelling. It's in this really cute retro, retro kitchen bag that I made. Um, I think it's a Michael Miller fabric. And the zipper pull on it is this little copper copper teapot. I like looking for things that um, I can use for zipper pulls. 
All right. This one is another Mill Hill kit. And this one is called, it's from the Buttons and Beads, or Buttons and Beads Spring Series. And it was called Stitch in Time. Ah. And this is what it will look like. And I stitched on this on the plane on the way to Fort Lauderdale for Stitching in the Wild this year. And I got the, the whole tomato done while I was on the plane. And excuse me, I'm gonna hold this up and get a drink really quickly. And sorry if that wobbled around a lot after I decided I'd had that bright idea. Um. But yeah, I flew, it's a startup airline and they're flying from Delaware directly to several places, many, several places now, but um, a few destinations in Florida and Fort Lauderdale was one of them. So I was able to fly down there super cheap. Um, but of course you pay for all your bags and things like that. So I had one bag um, that I checked and then I was allowed what they called a personal item. So oversized pocketbook basically. But that's why I love the Mill Hill kits because this was it. That's all I had to take with me. I didn't need hoops, I didn't need anything else. There's a little tiny pair of scissors in here and I was ready for my flight. Plus um, with the perforated paper, again, so, so light, no magnification and I'm fine to stitch so. Makes a great, great stitching, um, great stitching, or great travel project. Sorry, I'm thinking of two things. This next one is Cricut Collection Bed and Bath One. This is the pattern. I am doing the little girl that's at the top in the bathtub with the books and the perfect ending. And I am almost finished, but let me hold this up. This is on Zweigart 28 count blue lagoon and they may have stopped making it. I've tried finding more and I'm having a little trouble. Um, what I plan to do with this, I already have the frame. It's going to be a bigger rectangle frame and I'm going to put a clock clockwork down here and use this as a clock in my bathroom. I, I had a clock in the bathroom for years and it, it quit working. And so I had the bright idea to make a clock. Um, and the only thing I have left to do on her is the um, Krynik, is it Krynik? I think it's Krynik. Oh no, it's, it's Nordic Gold, it's this. Sorry, as I'm bobbling around, you know, sparkly, th sparkly threads. So she gets this big pile of bubbles up here. And then there's a few that trail down. And then she's also still missing her, um, her headband. And there's a few bubbles floating up here. So she is almost done. And it's all in DMC except the weight. The weight is Splendor Silk because Silk, I think, provides... It's not as um, smooth as DMC. It puffs up a little bit more, so it provides a little better coverage than this dark fabric. I needed that white coverage to be as good as I could get it, so... Um, but that will be a clock, and... I will be finishing this one this year as well. That, that's on my must get finished list. I don't do a lot of planning and scheduling and project planning. I don't, I, I have a full-time job where I have to do enough of that and I don't want my hobby to mirror my work. Um, but you know, mentally I've got my, my, I don't want to call it to-do list, my wish list or my pseudo plan. 
This next one just came out this year. I bought it at um, StitchCon, and it is Hello from Liz Matthews, Gifts for My Garden. This is it. They had it stitched up, and I fell in love with it stitched up. And I have all of the flowers done. And this is on, hold on, I will find the fabric. Oh, um, 32 count mystic fabrics and it's called everything else. And I love this everything else. It is the perfect um, modeling cream. It's a little bit like the dirty porcelain. Um, I need to buy some more of this. It's really nice. So the flowers are all done and this would be nice just like this. I debated just finishing it this way, but I love this green. It's the green that I have on. It is my favorite color. Um, and my thinking was that I could do the outline and then that's another one where it would be sort of some mindless fill in work for retreats. Oh, my Christmas lights are showing through. Um, but that stitched up really fast. I mean, I think, a, well, I don't remember if I had it on one or two floss tubes. And it should not still be in the Q-snap, but I think when I go through and zip all these pouches back up, I need to get some of this stuff out of the Q-snaps. All right, this next one, oh, it's the little girl's like a big envelope pouch that I'll show in a bit. It's got another memorabilia. Oh, okay, so I didn't start this one. I've got all the floss. And yes, it's just the skeins in there now. But it is um, Nightingale, it's a Mirabilia. And I had asked my viewers to help me pick a fabric and I we did settle finally on fabrics by Stephanie Banshee. I got a nice collection of fabrics by Stephanie when I was at um, Stitching in the Wild. She was there and had whole tables full of her fabric. And, oh. And she's so nice too. I, everybody in stitching is nice. But this, this banshee is just a gorgeous blues and greens, that little bit of creams in there. Um, but I had already figured out where like her head was going to go. Oh, I know what I was going to do. So there's this sort of yellow section and light section and she is holding a lantern. And um, so I, I want to have the light there in front of her so that the lantern is, you know, it looks like it's late from the lantern. But it took me so long to pick the fabric out that then I think then it was summertime and I had some summer retreats happening and I had some definite like boardwalk beach themed summer patterns and I sort of moved on to summer and then fall and never got any stitching done on her. All right, I got two more in this box. Oh, I didn't get very far on this one. This one was sort of a disaster. So this is from the book Between Friends, a spring sampling, and it was a collaboration between hands-on design and summer house stitch works. And I love this book. This book has several cute patterns in it, but what I was working on were these Beast Cornus down here. Um, but I didn't get very far. And it was partly because I was stitching on it. Okay, that's not it. That's just a little piece of leftover fabric. I was stitching on it at a, at a retreat and It, it was requiring quite a bit of concentration because of the way you count around. And this is all I got done. And yes, those little pink flowers look a mess. It's because you're expecting them to look like 
X's and they're not. They're all little Algerian eyelets. If I hold it up closer, then you can see what it's supposed to or why it looks like that. But it's all these little Algerian eyelets. But this, this white um, line that runs around, you can see it. It's on this largest um, one here. And counting that at the retreat, it, it was just a recipe for disaster. So I put it away and moved on. I think then I worked on um, the little girl in the bathtub, which is why this is right with that, because that was all one trip. Um, all right, I got one more pouch back here. And I don't know what it is. Oh. All right, this one may be my oldest whip. And when I say old, I mean old. I think this is from hmm, I finished the memorabilia that's in my bedroom. Maybe nineteen ninety five. <laughs> so coming up on 30 years, 30 years, yeah. This was Lavender and Lace Angel of Mercy, and it's this, it's this, uh, okay, I can't get it to focus. There we go. It's this angel and the little, the little girl. Um, I had planned to do this for my mother. 30 years ago. Um, my mother has since passed, but um, this has been sitting, this was in a scroll rod for many, many years. And now I'm not sure I love the fabric. I don't know what the fabric is. It's, it may be the call for. Oh, I thought it had a hole in it, but no, it's just a little black thing. I've got, um, this is how I would normally stitch, right? I would normally do like one color as much as I can reasonably count and do, and then I would come in with the next color. So that's why this looks like crazy like this. Um, I'm not loving the fabric now. Man, the stitches look a mess on the camera. They don't look that messy in person. It's something about the way the light catches them. Um, I'm not loving the fabric now. And since my mother has passed working on this now, honestly, just makes me feel a little sad. So I, I don't know. I, I took it off the scroll frame it's also damaged from being on the scroll frame. I took it off the scroll frame just in this past year so that I could load up the scroll frame with something I want to do, a modern folk embroidery. Um, and I, I don't know if I will get back to this or not. I've got some other mirrors. I've got the nightingale. Um, I have the Christmas fairy. I have one in the large scroll frame that I'm I'm gonna show next. I have some other ones that I like better than this one now. Well, this is a lavender and lace, it's not Snora Corbett's mother, but all right, this is a mirabilia that I love. So this is the big envelope pouch that I made for my scroll frame. Um, this front flap is probably, well, it's definitely longer than it needed to be, but I did that on purpose so that I could see the whole um, panel design. It's lined with this really cute plaid. I love this envelope so much that I had it sitting on the other sofa in my family room for like a month after I made it just so I could look at it. This is... Princess Eliana, 
and I am doing her. I love the way she just looks so whimsical running along in her crazy fancy dress. And I am doing her on Fabrics by Stephanie Ocean Tide. So I'm just leaning into the bright. She's got lots of bright colors happening on her dress and I'm just rolling with it and putting her on another contrasting bright color. It's not quite as bright as it's showing up on camera, but I basically have the bottom of her dress finished. Let me hold it up closer. Um, but love this ocean tide. I don't, um, Stephanie from Fabrics by Stephanie herself said that she loves blues. And so a lot of her fabrics, she's, she's got a really nice selection of different shades of blues or blues more, you know, mixed with other colors. And, um, I like blues as well, but so what, what I have done is this bottom part of her dress, all of the purple and it started, started over here in the scallops in this part. Um, and I think I just worked on her for a weekend last year. And then again, it was one of those projects that I got distracted from and she has a little pouch to match. It's not all of her floss is in there. Um, these are just the ones that I've already been stitching with. All right, let me not knock myself in the head. That would be something I would do for sure. All right. Let me get this back in here. I can prop it up. My floss just slid down. All right. This next one, I'm not going to haul this out because, quite honestly, it's just white Lugana in the scroll frame, but. This is my other envelope pouch. This one, I should have made the flap longer. It was the first one I made, um, but it works. But it's these really cute little mice. Um, it has just plain white Lugana on the frame. I am stitching, I can pull the pattern out, Modern Folk Embroidery Winter Kaleidoscope which is this pattern. Um, and I had started it. I had a pretty nice start on it. Well, no, I had started it. Let me just say that. I can't say it was a pretty big start. It was a, it was a couple nights stitching. I didn't like the fabric. I didn't like the coverage that I was getting with the floss I was using and the fabric and so there was a lot of experimenting. I wanted to do it red on white. There was a lot of experimenting with um, different reds and different fabrics. So different reds, I mean, I had tried Sulky. I knew I didn't want to use DMC. I tried Sulky. I tried several different um, silks. I tried several different fabrics. I had two different Adas. I was going to just do it on Ada. I couldn't find one that I really liked working on. And I've ended up with a... Um, 32 count white Lugana that I'm going to do it on. And I like the coverage on it. It was the best, um, it was the best coverage and it felt good stitching it. I think that was one of the challenges I was having. One of the fabrics, the coverage was good, but you kind of felt the thread drag through. I think it was the sulky when I was trying to use that and I hated stitching with it. I'm going to have to try it again on some different fabrics and see, but I'm going to use the red splendor, which I showed earlier. Um, this splendor is like $4 and it is 12 ply eight yards. It's a lot of silk for the price. It's much cheaper than, um, your overdyes and stuff. And it, it's nice to work with. It doesn't fray. 
or get like fuzzy toward the end. So you can use it like you would DMC. It really doesn't seem to fray out toward the end any faster than DMC would. And, and some silks really start to get fuzzy and not be right. So you end up having to throw, you know, finish it off and get a new, new piece to stitch. Um, it doesn't fray. The coverage is good. The price you can't beat. And my LNS carries it. One of, one of my LNSs. So, um, actually a couple of them do now that I think about it. So it's pretty easy for me to get my hands on too. But I like the, I like the, the, the LNS actually recommended the Splendor and they sell other silks and I wanted a white silk or was complaining about white coverage. And they said, here, try the Splendor. We think you'll be happier with that. And it was the best suggestion. All right. Okay, that's just from fabric. I was gonna say, good Lord, not another thread. Where are these coming from? I'll never find what project they went back into. All right, we're down to my last tub here. Good Lord. This is another ancient, ancient um, stitch. It's a Donna Graber. Let me find the name of it if I have the name. Oh, the apple quilt. <coughs> so she does a lot of these little black cats and kind of Amish looking designs. And this is the pattern. And this is another one that goes back probably to early 90s. Do I have it upside down? I do. I do. But I have all of the kind of cream and gray stitched. It just needs the apples, the birds, and the cats. And it would be done. Um, no, I lied. There's more than that to do. But see how, see how the shading is very subtle on here? It doesn't look so subtle in, in person. It looks like big blocks of color. I'm just not sure something's I'm sure it's the right colors of floss, but it doesn't look very good. Maybe once those red apples are on there or something, it would calm down. But right now it's looking more like zebra stripes than just shadows on a white quilt. I don't know. And you can see it was in a hoop, a really large hoop for about 30 years. I just took it out last year when I was digging through. I just got back into cross stitching last year. And so I dug through um, and looked at my, found all my old projects. All right, this is my other old one. This is the last old project that I have. And this is another one going back about 30 years. This is a Teresa Wensler and it was a leisure arts quilt called, or kit called Tapestry Cat. And at the time, I had a Himalayan cat who looked very much like that cat on there. Um, this stitch is a lot of work and it's got all these purpley colors in here and that's one color that I have none of in my house. So I don't know what I would do with this when I'm done. I've never known what I would do with it, even in my old house, which I lived in when I started it. But I have a lot of this sucker done, and I'm really feeling like I should finish it. And I'll tell you what my challenge is. Okay, it kind of looks like a demon cat because she doesn't have the eyes yet. Um, but you can see I've got all of those borders, the cat. What I don't have done are these flowers. And these flowers are all 
quarter and it has stitches and a lot of back stitching. So here she is up close. You, you can see the, the flower border. Like I've got the leaves all in, but the flowers, I've been jumping around doing different colors like this, this, this color, <laughs> you can see there's chunks of it around. So that's obviously what I was working on were the things that were in those colors. <sighs> Funny thing. This used to be my travel project. I I traveled with this and that's what I, I mean, car trips or day trips, not flying. Um, I couldn't see the stitch on this traveling. I don't, it's some kind of even weave. It's really dense. I don't even know what the heck this fabric is. I wonder if it says. 28 count even weave so no it doesn't say um it's, it's not like lugana it it's um it's more solid than lugana i don't think i can get it to show up on camera um anyway i had thought about and somebody said yeah somebody on my plus tube when I first showed this said yeah that's what I should do oh here's the color I was working on it apparently was this purple back stitching is what I was doing when I yeah probably because I didn't like doing back stitching then any more than I do now um that maybe I should just do like a strand a day now that I'm done my uh, temperature chart that I had to work on a little bit every day. Maybe I should just do a strand a day on this until it's done. Cause it really is almost done except for these flowers. The only other thing I thought about doing is just framing it square and just framing it right up to this border. So basically covering all these flowers and that outer border. Um, Yeah, I'm not ripping all, I'm, yeah. I just had the bright idea that, oh, maybe I'll just rip all the flowers out and just have the two borders. I could come in and fill in the borders here. No, that's, that, that's gonna be a pain in the neck to tear all that out. That's not happening either. I think my best bet is probably some kind of plan, like a strand a day or X strands per week, um, something just to force myself to get this done. It's, it's too much work in it to, not finish it. And I do, I do like it. Oh, so that's that one. All right. Now I'm into a couple things that are kitted up, but not started. This, um, means you stitch, uh, serenity room. I got this at Galleria. One word of warning, this official website is www.meansyoustitch.com and I tried on two different computers and when I search that, something not cross-stitch comes up and it's not something that you want to have coming up in your browser history. So I don't know what it is about the address that it's converting. I like double check the spelling. I, I, I really just don't know what is happening, but it links to like Korean porn. Um, and I was like, what the heck is going on? I typed it in again, went to the same place. So I finally, I think just in Google searched means you stitch. And then the link came up and when I used that link, it was fine. It went to where I wanted it to go. It was a cross stitch site, cross stitch site. Anyway, careful if you Google that one or if you just type it in your browser, but I'm doing it in 311 and she had this stitched up at Galleria on a big pillow and it was a blue kind of big plaid. And so I have a couple options. This one is fabric 
Flare. It doesn't have a name on it. I know it's Fabric Flare, but it's striped. You can see there, you can see the stripes. So it's striped, the 311. Or another option is Weigart makes, they don't make blue, but they do have yellow in the big kind of plaid. And the blue looks nice on that as well. So that's how she had it stitched was on a plaid, like blue plaid fabric and made into a pillow because it, it says my serenity room. So it would be a really nice uh, pillow. So this is another option. I don't know which fabric I'm going to use. This was another one I had kitted up. I thought I was going to start it. I think sampler, sampler September. And then I don't remember what happened now. Sampler in September. Oh, yes, I do. I know exactly what happened in September. I went on my cruise from hell and came home with COVID and was sick for 10 days. So I didn't do any stitching. That's what happened to Sampler Sampler September. Oh my God, what is my problem saying that? Uh, this next one. Oh, uh, I did the no-no. Is in the library for Mojo Stitches. It's this pattern. Um, Garon from Garon Stitchery had it. Let me... Oh. Whatever that's printed with, like stuck to my bag. I've never had that happen, but I don't, it's kind of shiny. And it it's to be stitched with these um, um, country got it, country garden threads, cottage garden threads. So I have the thread pack for it, but I haven't started it. I haven't even pulled fabric for this one. Um, but the, so the threads are very variegated. And I think what they actually have you doing is sort of selectively using portions of the thread to stitch things in different colors. And uh, I'm not sure why you wouldn't just use like different individual colors of DMC would be easier, but anyway. I haven't started it yet. I messed up my bag with my, with that. This is a bag I bought too. It's not one I, not one I need. What's that? Oh, I do know what this is. So, my friend Lana, who's a Silly Notion stitcher, and I went to a retreat at Salty Yarns last year. Last year? Yeah, last year. Um, and it's a, kind, it's a different kind of retreat. So it's not just working on whatever you want to work on. It's basically multiple classes through the weekend. But... Summer House Stitchworks was there. Beth, Beth, I think her name was. And this was the special project that she had for us, was this box. But what we worked on in class were these thread-covered buttons, which apparently it was how clothing buttons were made back in the day. Um, because you would start with just a ring and from the ring, there's a certain way you, you thread the, you twist the thread around and you end up with this little doodad. Can I get it to focus? And hold it, uh, maybe, oh. Okay, it's not very close, but I think if I get closer, all right, there we go. I have to cover my face or, or the camera wants to focus on my face. So you make this little thread button and that's what, that's what we worked on in the class. Cause she said, we all know how to stitch. She 
walked us through how to how to assemble the box, the pillow. But we were making these little buttons. Well, we laughed because everyone in the class did one or two buttons in the allotted time and then said, yeah, we're not doing this. We're just going to buy some yellow buttons and stitch them on and call it a day. But these were the colors of floss for the project. So we got the pattern and the floss and the rings to do the little button things. And she gave us some charms and all kinds of doodads in there. That's what that, that's what was in that bag. All right, I'm almost done. Good Lord, it's almost two hours. Okay, this last one, or now we're into fall. So we are almost finished. So this pattern is from Autumn Lane Stitchery. I have it in this Cross Stitch 2021 Halloween magazine, but it's these little cats right here, or cats. It's this cat and pumpkins down here in this corner. And if I can get my finger to go the right direction, I do know that you can get this from Autumn Lane Stitchery now. Um, I saw it stitched up at Galleria last year. There. And where'd my little... There it is. Let's see, where'd my little foam cord go? I got it almost finished. I am doing it on this fabric flare fabric with the spider webs. But it goes pumpkin, cat, pumpkin, pumpkin. So there's just the one cat in the middle there. And the pumpkin down on this end will be this brighter orange. Um, but super fast. Definitely will finish this this year as well. So this is another one that's so close to finish that this is going to get finished. In fact... Hmm. That's maybe what I ought to do with these projects instead of keeping them all on the one shelf. I should maybe pull out the ones that are close enough to finish. Hmm. Well, there's downsides to that too. I don't know. All right. This next one is Autumn Quakers. So I said I'm going to start Winter Quakers. I started this year autumn quakers and i got almost a page done which looks like it should be a lot but it's really this corner is what i got done um to keep organized for this one i am using one of these little doodads if you've never used one of these this is the first time i used one um jesse marie does stuff jesse recommended them and I don't know if you can tell I've actually got a needle threaded with each color so Autumn Quakers this is all the colors that it uses but there are so frequent color changes you'd be threading and unthreading your needle every 10 stitches so this little doodad is great I can just grab the need if I've got to go to a different color I just grab the needle in the different color and keep on stitching and it makes that really simple the changing of colors i i got um i got two of those for christmas they were on my christmas list in my amazon wish list and my dad got me one and my brother's family got me the other one so and this is on the called for which is um 28 count picture this plus doubloon and there's my start this year so i started it this fall and that's how far i got and let me hold it up closer so you can see the stitching but it's really yummy fall colors lots of rust and red and a little bit of purple and a couple greens and um I'm not, this is a fun stitch. It's not a fast stitch, 
but it's a fun stitch and everything shouldn't be fast. I like to mix up uh, little projects and big projects. There's, I don't have any little projects in whips because part of why I like little projects is, you know, you're working on a bunch of these big things like this. Um, oh, these are the, these are the Valdani's for it. They're just, they're just yummy. They're so pretty in their box. They're coming out brighter on camera. They're really, they're really nice. Kind of jewel tone, I'll call them. Oh, this was supposed to be a finish this year and I didn't get there. This is my Quaker pumpkins. I even have the frame already for this from, hello from Liz Matthews. And I am not putting the All Hallows Eve on there. So I did some modifications. I'm not also not putting this crow up here. I don't like crows, so I'm taking it off. I'm putting another Quaker up there. Um, it's not going to be big enough. Yeah, I've already got the frame for it. And it's not nearly as um, fluorescent yellow. It always comes out this really, well, actually it looks better up close. So that's where I'm at. The frame around it and then maybe a couple more quicker motifs that I have to add in since I'm not putting that crow is all that I have left. And I'll be honest, um, well, I started this last fall. This fall I got a lot more of the, I did all of the small Quakers. Most of the big pumpkins were done. Um, and the border on the bottom was done. And then I had to find the, figure out what frame I wanted to use. And then I actually ran the border up and started across the top to be the right, um, to be the right height for the frame. And then once I get the border all the way across, I may have to come through and, you know, maybe just at the top part, put a few more Quaker pump, Quakers motifs in. These smaller motifs, oh, I missed my clips. These smaller motifs across the top, there's really just three different patterns that keep repeating and then they're in different colors. So it would be really easy to nab a couple of those and sprinkle them across the top. But that border made a standard framework. So that's, that's what's happening there. I'm modifying this so that it would fit a frame that I could easily find. Um, and that, that border across the stop across the top. That's another one that might be good retreat stitching. It's a little mindless, although I do need a magnifier to work on this. Um, but I have, I have travel magnifiers, so that would certainly be doable. Um, oh, okay. This is not a start. This is playing with Jax from Cricut Collection. And then I also have in here um, a Wicked Patch, which is similar. Oh, it's from a clearance bin. Oh dear. Um, my phone is going dead. One moment, let me get rid of this message on my phone. Okay, hopefully I can edit that out okay. Although now I lost my stitching that I was holding. Oh, I threw it in there. All distracted by the phone giving me a low battery, which good Lord means I've been talking long enough. Um, I haven't started this yet, but playing with Jax, um, I have a couple colors that are options, possible options. So you can see it's lots of bright oranges and creams and I think it would show up really nicely on a darker color. And these are some fabrics that I got at um, 
stitch con and they didn't have names i think they're from Rivaris. these are the flosses but see the flosses look really good on the eggplant and they look really good on the the green maybe better on the green at least on camera I usually will haul everything out in my foyer it gets really nice um bright but indirect sunlight but it's very bright in there and it's the perfect spot for me to put out my fabric and my floss on the floor and I can stand back and really look and see which one do I like the best And these are in the fall bag that I got when I was in, I did buy this one, um, when I was at Stitch North, Canada, get it? With the moose and the maple leaf and, um, oh, there is a start in there. What is that? Oh, what's this other stuff doing in here? All right. Um, this is Nora Corbett, Gigi, and I started this one this fall, and she is on, hang on, I gotta find her fabric, oh, Grace Notes Caramel Kiss, Grace Notes is gorgeous fabric, love, love, love it, they're very careful to maintain the integrity of the um fabric like their process doesn't soften it or create a bunch of schlubs and um it's just really nice to work on but and the and their modeling is subtle i like subtle modeling i got pretty far on her so i started her this year and that's how far i got and it is basically it's all of this draping over here and then I've started up her dress so she's probably she might be 50% done 50% of the cross stitch before the beading. She does have some beading, not a lot though. She's got like a beaded necklace and then the staff. Um, there's kind of some beaded curly cues and the staff gets a little bit of beading around it, but. Um, I maybe could get this finished this year. Uh, I have to start, I think this year, instead of Sampler S September, I'm going to start my Halloween stitching in September. My other thought was either on the 13th or the 31st of every month, stitching Halloween. Um, because I have a lot of really cute Halloween patterns, more than I will get done in this lifetime. And... So it would be nice to get more than, like this year, I did sampler September. Well, then I, I got COVID and I didn't have any plans to stitch on fall or Halloween in September. But then that really meant that October was all of my Halloween. I spilled over a little bit into November, but then I had fall stitching, the Autumn Quakers and the Quaker Pumpkins that I wanted to stitch on. And so... One month isn't enough for me for Halloween. And then with the with the fall stitching November, then I really just gave December for Christmas stitching and I've got more Christmas stitching than that though than that that I want to do. So I may do a Christmas in July and stitch all Christmas this July and then Halloween stitch that actually September and October and then December I'll do quick Christmas as well. So I'll have two months of Christmas stitching and two months of Halloween stitching or something like that. I think I may be, my mind might wrap around that better than this 13, 31st plan. I like that plan. I know there's people that stitch on the Christmas stuff the 25th of every month. 
I don't often know what date it is. I know what day it is, but the date. Yeah, I, I, you know, I have ballpark, like it's dated 26 or 27, that kind of thing. It may just, that, that stitching a certain day might, date each month might become more work than, than what I can really do. All right. This is a cute retro bag, but, um, it's a whole lot of Halloween floss and fabrics and patterns. It's some books that I did some stitching in this year. I don't think there's anything that is a whip in the hair. So since I'm over two hours, I am going to stop there. I thought this was going to be about, I knew it was going to run over an hour. I didn't expect it to go a full two hours. So thank you for sticking with me through all of this. And um, just know if you visit my regular floss tube, I'm not quite as like wonky holding things up. I try to press everything that I've worked on so that everything's pressed and are actually clipped onto the boards and I'm not juggling as quite as much, but that just wasn't possible to do with 50, about 50 projects. So thanks for sticking with me and happy stitching everybody. I am looking forward to this weekend watching everybody else's whip parade. So I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.